Welcome everyone to another episode of the Inside Word. My name is Lachlan McLean from Beer Cartel, Australia's number one craft beer retailer. Uh, for this episode, I am joined by Sam Hamble, the co-founder of Hop Nation. We chat about a whole number of things about how they started, their wine background, uh, Jedi juice, of course, and kind of where they're going. Um, but before we dive into the uh, to the chat, it's time to draw our prize uh, for last week. So once again, we do a listener prize every week. Uh, I've got a prize. Just listen out for the code word at the end of this episode. Go into the description to the link, put the word in, and you go into the running. But for last week, we've got a mix six from Mountain Goat, and the winner is Matt Burns. Congratulations. That'll get sent out to you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy. For this week's prize, uh, we've got actually a couple of mix sixes from Hop Nation. Uh, so once again, go into the description, uh, listen out for the code word during the episode, put it up there, and you go into the running. All right, let's get into it. So once again, we've got uh, Sam Hamble from Hop Nation. Um, I hope you all enjoy. Welcome, Sam, and thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, cheers, Lucky. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, so I guess you know. Before we get into the Hop Nation story, what's brought you to uh, Sydney? Um, well, up for a few days, um, we have recently launched a wine arm of our um, kind of business and yep. spending a couple of days tasting tasting through those wines with some people. And yeah, nice. um, we've also got the um, Batch Sour Fest on Saturday. So. Oh, part of that, at a small batch. Yeah, yep. So yeah, that should nice. be fun, We're pouring some um, site beers. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I guess um, we'll jump into the, the Hop Nation story. And you mentioned there you've launched a, um, a wine arm. However, the wine kind of came before beer? Um, yeah, yeah. So um, before we started Hop Nation, um, both Dunk and I, who's um, um, who start, we both started Hop Nation, we... Both were winemakers, um, worked around around the place and, yep. and both studied. So, yeah, that was before beer and now wine's yeah, right. so set up again. I, uh, I was jumping on your website and he did 29 different harvests. You did 14 across Australia, New Zealand, States, yeah, Europe. Yeah, did a fair bit of travelling with it. Um, and, it, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's a good way to travel. Um, yeah, right. So and you're from South Australia, so heart of the wine region. Yeah, yeah. Grew up in Adelaide and, yeah, that's where I started working and studied, yeah. Is that just a uh, grew up in the region, so got drawn into wine, or did you kind of find something about wine you like that drew you um, in? A bit of both, yeah. Um, I was working in vineyards, you know, in the school holidays growing up, just helping yeah, right. out, and <laughs> um, and then yeah, just wanted to like making stuff, and and yeah, the the culture around wine's pretty big, so yeah, you can fall into it pretty quick. Yeah, right. So you did you meet Duncan before? Um, no, we met over in New Zealand, so we were both yeah, right. working for wineries in Central Otago. Yeah, lovely. Um, Small town, so anyone around a similar age to you that does stuff, you meet pretty quickly, yeah. And if, uh, mutual love of beer or wine brought you together? Um, we It was wine events, but we both had a brewery set up and um, got a little bit competitive at stages, <laughs> and um, yeah, we entered them in the local competitions and yeah, right. um, had a bit of fun with it, yeah. So that was just kind of some home brewing on the side? Yeah, yeah. We had setups at the back of the winery, so you could use a bit of the gear and, um, yeah, it was still it was still fun. It was a lot of, you know, Sunday barbecues with a lot yeah, of right. drinking, a lot of making, yeah. Yeah, right. So um, kind of doing the wine for a number of years um, and, yeah, I guess was there ever a moment you're like, yep, let's open a brewery or was it kind of just, uh, we'll try this and just kind of fell into it? Um yeah, well, I moved to Mornington, which is south of Melbourne, and and Duncan moved to the Yarra Valley, working yep. for wineries, yeah. and we had a couple of recipes that you know were popular among our friends, and you know, pretty similar story to what goes round. But we thought we'd um, you know upscale um, one of the recipes and get some branding and and whatnot yep. going, and and yeah, we launched with a an Australian session IPA, yep. um, which now we don't make anymore, but. Um, it was part of a you know a nation based IPA series, yep. so we had a um, an Australian all Australian hopped IPA, an American hop red ale which we yep. have as the buzz, and a Kiwi hop double IPA which we actually never were ended up being happy with the recipe, so I've never ever yeah, right. released it. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's kind of where the name comes from, Hop Nation. That's where it came from, and then at one stage we had a bit of a epiphany where we thought let's just stop concentrating on that and try and make the best combination of hot beers we can, yeah, we can right. make. So you were gypsying those breweries um, for, for a little while and then yeah. kind of... Yeah, we were... I think we were the first clients... No, where do we start? Um, we, we were the first clients at Hawker's when oh, yeah. they were building. Yep. Um, so 
um, w watching them put it together and get going was actually really, really cool. And then um, so we brewed the fiend there, and then um, also at Cavalier when um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad Shepherd and Kaiju and Exit were all starting up. So yeah, we had a little community out there. It was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I was yeah. talking to. Uh, Dan Dayton and he was out there as well and kind of telling the gypsy community that was kind of all there and all kind of competing and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I remember we had, I think it was start of 16, we had I think the the damned Pilsner bottles yeah. in beer club and we're like, oh, this tastes great. So I was like, who are these guys? Um, and then you guys, not long after that, opened a brewery. Yeah. So yeah, we were in bottles back then and... Um, we we were like, you know, this is this is going awry as a gypsy, but if we're going to actually do it, we've got to find some finance and do it properly. Otherwise, we're just <laughs> going to be, you know, kicking buckets around. So yep. um, one of Duncan's friends in New Zealand at Sawmill Brewery oh, yeah. um, rang him up and said, we're moving and upgrading to a bigger system. Um, we have one here and it was, a, it was a good price under the condition we came and got it. So Duncan actually flew over there and he's, Dad flew up and they spent a week cutting it apart and getting it in a forty foot container, and then we, then we needed a warehouse. So yeah. we were looking around and we, we found this one in Footscray, and and then yeah, that's where it kind of started. Yeah, and I've been to the brewery um, in Footscray, and it's in a great location. You kind of walk down it's in the docks. Um, it's just near the docks. Yeah, 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 you kind of walk down, and there's all the other businesses and seafood, and you kind of the big hop sign. Uh, it's got a great kind of vibe, and I think people like big high kind of church like um vibe kind of big tall um ceilings and you know it's, it's right in the middle of a brewery you know the, the bar and what i think when i was there on a brewing day and i think the bar becomes the brewery on on yeah, brewing it's, days it's a tight space yeah we, <laughs> we make it work but yeah it's an original 1880s um whale fat factory so it's got some character because the river used to run behind it and they used yeah. to bring the whales in and render them down and um was is a few things in its time, um, but when we took it over, it was a kind of a semi derelict photography studio. Um, yeah, right. So then we re redid you know the floors and the power and water and all those things and put the brewery in. Got it working. Um, you mentioned there some of the the label art, and I know you go to the brewery and there's a lot of really cool artwork on the on the walls of the brewery and stuff. Um, the artwork and kind of your label cans are really really distinct and icon kind of iconic, I guess, in the industry. Um, was that always a big kind of focus? Yeah, the um, I kind of forgot to mention Steph, who was one of the founders as well. She lives in Canada, but a friend of ours um, really helped initially with the design and, and feel of the brand, and we've um, we've kind of grown it from then, from there. But yeah, we've always wanted to work with artists, and we've got a number of them that we use regularly, plus a few here and there mm. in between. And yeah, we wanted to give the you know the beer a something beyond just a, you know, a can. So, yeah. Yeah, I think your labels have um, the really great great way of having kind of the artistic vibe of, you know, a garage project and a few other breweries, but also still maintaining, you know, a, an identity, like, say, you know, Bolter, who have that core branding. So you can still identify what it is straight off. Um, but yeah, I think cans are great. Um, it's always been from the start. Um, I guess going into the beers... Uh, you started with an IPA um, and you kind of you did the IPA series um, and have been kind of known for the hops, obviously in the name. Has the hops always been the thing that drew you into beer? Um, I guess, you know, we started with beers that we enjoy drinking and yep. um, kind of influenced from those American style hop driven um, IPAs and pails. So that was where we were focusing and, and we have always really concentrated on different uses and combinations of hops. and um, But... We also now we've got to the point where we really want a broad, you know, full range of beers for mm. people to come and drink at the brewery. And yeah. so we, while we mainly focus on hop driven beers, we we we're making all styles really. Yeah, you even got an organic lager. We have a lager. Yeah, there's one of our brew team is obsessed with lagers. So yeah, right. And when, when we started doing the <laughs> pilot batches for that, he was pretty happy. Yeah, yeah awesome. Um, I guess going into the IPAs, I guess we have to talk about um, kind of New England IPAs and, and Jedi Juice. Um, I guess that was kind of the beer that really got your name out. I guess in the industry, it's been top ten in the one hundred for the last definitely two, three years. Yeah, three years. Yeah, it's definitely one that opened a lot of doors for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's um, and you know. Initially, we thought it might be a 
just a little trend beer that we get a summer out of, but it's um, it's held on to its own and yeah, yeah keeps on going. I think we were just talking yesterday in the office and uh, we're talking about some other styles that are kind of a bit more fad styles and they, they kind of come and go, like maybe like Brute IPA or whatnot. Well, the New England IPA, I think at the time we were like, oh, when's this going to go away? When's it kind of go back? It never has. I don't think it ever will now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cemented itself as a style pretty much in every brewery's portfolio now. That's yeah, some kind of hazy, yeah. Um, what do you think about them? Um, I like them. We, you know, we did a um, brewers training day last week, and we did a bunch of flights, and we we sat after, and you know, we said which flight did everyone enjoy the most. You know, just trying and working through. We did it blind, and and you know, half the group said the hazies. You know, because we did some different style of IPAs as well, but just the drinkability of them. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I I do like them. Sure. Do you think in the hazy IPAs? Like, you know, I was at a um, IBA mashup only a couple of days ago with a guy from the craft strategy was there and we're talking about innovation. How much innovation do you think is there for a kind of a hazy IPA? Do you think there's still more we can do with it? Um, I think it'll continue to evolve. You know, you can only, you can go pretty wild with them and I don't know if that makes them better. I think yeah. it's still a nice sweet spot for just a n- nice balanced um, mm. hazy without, you know, too many adjuncts or Yep. Um, you know, fruit. So Just a well-made beer. Yeah, I think there's definitely a spot for that. I mean, outside of that, you can have fun and whether or not those are fads of that version. Yeah, yeah who knows. Um, I guess back to Jedi Juice. Um, I guess we'll talk about labelling. We've got to, I guess, talk about the labelling of Jedi Juice. Um, where did the name come from? Like, what's the Star Wars, obviously, connection to it? Um, it Actually, it was for Gabs and I think it was a Friday about 2 o'clock and we had to have the, the name in by... <laughs> four o'clock and um i don't know sometimes inspiration i look up the um, marijuana strain website because the they're always great incredibly creative yep. and there was one called um jedi haze and yeah we chatted to everyone and then somehow someone said jedi juice and we put that in the um in the application and with, with no label or decal and um it went well at gabs and said to steph um um can we find an artist to draw something for that and then that came back yep. and and without thinking about it too much it um kind of stuck and um yeah created the fuss it's created yeah well, i guess on on that fuss um it has been i guess at the forefront of some of the um a back labeling issues not issues but kind of conversations that have been going around um we yeah i guess i know you've just thrown your last ever jedi juice party was it just yeah. happened or about to happen? We've just um, last week or the week before we can the last batch. So yeah, um, the new packaging will be out in two weeks. Yeah, still called Jedi Juice. It's not called Jedi Juice anymore. It's okay. it's pretty close, but we're kind of yeah. That'll come out in a couple <laughs> of weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess on the well on the A back. What's what's your opinion of of uh, that? Oh, uh, look, I think it's pretty Fine. pretty ridiculous. But yeah. um, what they represent and what they do, I respect. Um, so yep. look, I'm happy to, to go with it. Um, yeah, so we have, yeah. Yeah. I know if we were, we obviously it comes up every time there's an article or some sort of ruling. And, um, I think the thing that kind of scares us the most is we're talking at the IBA about the pregnancy labeling and stuff like that. And how even more ridiculous that is, if you haven't looked into it, have a read about it. But I think uh, the APAC is there, I guess, for us as an industry to regulate ourselves because if the government comes in and regulates it, uh, we could be in for a whole world of pain. Yeah, exactly. The anti alcohol lobby's got a yep. bit of momentum and we want to keep them at bay, really. Yeah, Otherwise, absolutely. the labels are going to look terrible and we won't be able yep. to have fun with them anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess still on hazy IPAs, um, one question I'm always kind of interested to find out from breweries and um, I think you guys got the really good balance between limited releases and core range. But like from those really hop forward beers, are they cost effective? Um, like, yeah, they are. Um, they are as um, they are and they aren't. You have to charge appropriately for mm-hmm. them. Um, you can't make them, you know, cheap and discounted. You, have, you know, so they are. Sometimes you can get too excited, you know, before we do them, we all sit down with the recipe yep. and, and not only talk about what flavors and um, we're aiming for and what we want to do with it, but also where it has to sit price point wise yep. um, from a sales point of view, that is an important part of it. Yeah, and you think kind of pushing them out uh, all the time is kind of sustainable? As well? um, I think it's 
good for everyone to to do to release them, but not not every week. I don't really see that as sustainable. But mm. like we at the moment trying to release a new you know, limited release every two or three months. Um, yeah. It yeah. yep. um, gives us time to trial with it, get some creative design behind it. And, you know, to do it properly, to turn around a beer ideas, um, almost six months. Yeah, so right. we've, um, we try and plan them in the off season for the next season. Because mm-hmm. um, by the time you get the recipe right, you get the design right, you get the packaging made. It takes a takes a while to do it properly. You can whip them out um, as kegs with some funny decals. Yeah. That's a bit easier, but to to can and release them to do them properly, yeah, we try and not make as many mistakes as we have in the past. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I guess on the whole keg versus pack, um, what, what's what works for you, kegs or pack? Like what's kind of um, we're 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 reasonably even split. Yeah, probably more in kegs still, but. Um, um, both, yeah, I think it's good to have both. Um, yeah, so I think for branding and getting it into people's hands, pack is great, especially mm. you know with the the way beer moves around um, through the you know through delivery services now. You know, like yourselves, you can really yep. reach out to to people. Um, and the pubs are pubs are great as well because you know people go and drink. You know, so yeah, 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 yeah. You can sit and enjoy a whole pint of it. Yep. Yeah, and um, I guess from the kegs as well, pushing through your own venue uh, in Fitzroy is definitely uh, advantageous. Yeah, Fitzroy, but that's all right. What did um, I say? <laughs> Fitzroy. 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 Sydney. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's great. I mean, I think you can't have a better place to drink your own beer. It's a cliche than, yeah. than at your own place. And and the guys um, that work at the tasting room, you know, um, have fun with with what they're doing and and what they're pouring and trying to educate as well as serve and. Mm. Yeah, no, I think it's a yeah. Everyone knows it's a no no brainer to have that yeah. access to the people that want to drink your beer. Yeah, absolutely. I know we talked about the hops, uh, but we did mention right at the start you are a winemaker uh, by trade to begin with. Um, I think it was maybe last year you started dabbling around maybe the year before actually with the site um, fermentation project. Yeah, so that's. Um, I mean, we. We've been looking at that for a few years now, but we've released them under Hop Nation. We mm. did one called the Sturm, which was a yeah, that's right. Riesling yeah, hybrid. Yeah. Um, um, I think it was like 2016 was the first year. And, and then we decided to concentrate it a bit more. And just for the branding can, you know, clarity, mm. we decided to give it its own name. And um, it's pretty much got its own site now we've, um, with another shed dedicated to the um, the barrel program, yeah, nice. um, which we will transition into a new place when, yeah, when hopefully everything <laughs> yeah falls falls together. But um, yeah, we're we're looking at um, you know and engaging new artists and 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 growers of the different fruits yep. to give regular supply each year and slowly building up that network to to um, you know give it momentum. So yeah, you talked about. Um in the site fermentation project, it's it is like I said for people out there. I guess what is the site fermentation? Because it's not beer and it's not wine. It's it's a co fermenter both. Yeah, so we we do a, a number of beers. One we have done each year was a um, like a grape beer hybrid. So it's a it's a sour blonde base um, which we this this year um, and last year pulled from the the blonde foudre, which is like a four thousand mm. liter oak barrel. Um, and then referment on the freshly pressed grape skin, so it's not actually the wine yeah, okay. coming out of it. It's just yeah. the flavour from the skin. So it's almost like the way you add, you know, cherries to a, um, right, okay. a sour. It's just the flavour from the grapes, and each one kind of expresses itself in its own way as the variety of the grape. Um, so we did four, and they're all quite different, um, but unique of their own varieties. And yeah, we've. We've got a, a regular supply of cherries now and plums and strawberries, um, so we, we we usually get the base beer culture and depend and then referment on fruit and then look at blending. Um, so there's there's a lot of fun in creating that because um, it's not just a recipe that you follow and mm. make. You can kind of 
work it out as you go, depending on how it develops and the flavors that come out. And do you have, uh, you know, get, we go right down the barrel, uh, right, right down the rabbit hole of kind of wild ferments and stuff, but do you have like a house culture that you guys have? Or? Um, we pr- pretty much do now. We've, we've purchased a few different cultures um, from the States and now um, through, through like it pretty much fermenting for the last couple of years, um, the strains have kind of evolved into their own combination. We're not one hundred percent sure what it is, but we mm. can kind of start to taste its its kind of common properties in each of the beers. And um, it's taken a while, but we're pretty kind of happy where it's at. But it's always evolving. Mm, I think um, I often say to some of my friends and kind of uh, customers out there that I think uh, kind of the Australian uh, wild and that, that sort of fermentation is our strength. Um, I think if you look out at all the other stuff going on, like the, um, I think some of the wild uh, beers coming out of Australia are absolutely amazing and kind of could, could put in front of any American or kind of Belgium and hold their own. I think that is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, some great ones out there, and I mm. think it's the the learning curve and the quality is is you know increasing fast, and it's yeah. pretty exciting. Area. Do you think that maybe that has something to do with um, the wine culture in Australia? Um, Maybe, potentially. Um, there's quite a few people out there that have worked in, you know, blending and barrel mm-hmm. work and um, and just the different types of fermentation and different strains out there. So maybe, yeah, there's a fair bit of knowledge out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess from the Hop Nation, you've got, you said you've got, a now, you've got another barrel room going on. Is that something you guys are going to look to keep expanding and get more barrels in over time? Yeah, we're, we are growing it and, and developing it and just being a bit more organized with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, you know, a couple of years ago, it was just kind of when we had time to work on it. But now there's, yeah, there's a bit more of a plan on, you know, um, getting the beer ready for, you know, the different, you know, seasonal fruits mm-hmm. and, and having a plan behind what kind of style it's going to be and how we're going to package it. Yeah. I guess from, from uh, your guys' perspective, uh, from like a brewing team, you've got so many different, you've got your core range, you've got limited releases and you've kind of got your signed does, is there a different person that kind of looks after each or do you kind of get taken in turns to go have fun on the, the barrel project? Or um, Duncan definitely leads the barrel project. Yep. Um, he, he's the one that seems to find time to kind of focus on yep. it, which is, which is good because it does take dedication. Yep. Um, yeah, I think within the team, there's everyone has their interest and strengths and we kind of try and let them go down that path if they want to, but we all talk about it and drink them and, you know, mm. so... Um, you know, our main focus is still the hop-driven beers of Hop Nation, but it's great to be able to have this creative side. Um, you know, it's got its own little packaging line now, so yeah, nice. um, we fire that up and everyone jumps on. Um, I guess on the on still on the site, um, the, the strength, I guess, of that and the Australian wild scene led to you guys starting your own uh, beer festival. Uh, yeah, so we we kind of, a couple of years ago we talked about it and then we thought, you know, if we don't do it, um, it won't happen. So we, we um, hired someone to help us in that area, um, Delaney, who um, does a great job. And, and then we've, you know, got some other breweries in on it. And, yeah, Blobfish started last year and it's on again this year. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an, a great event and just getting the people together and we brew a beer before it starts and, um, you know, just hang out for a couple of days. I guess before we kind of talk a bit more, but uh, where'd the name come from? Um, we just wanted a, um, like a, we, we threw a lot of names out there and, <laughs> and then um, one day, yeah, I just thought a, a blobfish is a pretty weird and wonderful Australian animal, so. Um, it's a weird and wonderful event. Yeah, so kind of, yeah, as simple as that and <laughs> um, and then chatted about it and kind of, it stuck, yeah. I know um, the whole calendar I looked through, that's the one I've kind of got my eye on to try and come down to. Um, very exciting. Is there kind of a little brewery lineup being announced um, soon? Yeah, or? we've got 22 Australian um, breweries locked in and four, maybe five internationals. Yeah, nice. I'm um, just finalizing the last few things. But yeah, there's going to be some great, great beers there for sure. Can't wait. Um, and I guess back to Hop Nation. Um, you've got, I think some big news came out at the start of this year, you're opening up another a premises um, at a bigger brewery. Tell us about that. Um, so, yeah, we've there's a up the road from us on the same block. Um, we're looking to develop um, just a 
um, bigger version of what we're doing. Um, so larger hospitality area and also um, a large area to brew, including we'll, we'll um, get a new brew house. It's still with council. Mm. There's a few issues with it being near a... Um, it's called Coot Island, so there's extra people that need to sign off on it. Anyway, it's dragging its feet dramatically, yep. so we're just um, just working through it, yeah. But hopefully something's happening this year. Yeah. Does it, uh, is it a bit scary, I guess, when you're looking at the size of some of these? Um, it it is, but when you've been standing on other people's feet in the same room for, you know, going on th- three years, it's pretty exciting as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll just make it'll open up what we can do and streamline our processes and yeah. What's uh, what's sort of increase we're kind of looking at from um, production wise? Yeah, so we we'll, we're building. It's a it's a, like a twelve hundred square meter, so it's not a, a massive place in you know the, some brewery sense, but it'll it'll allow us to grow. You know, into a we don't want to be huge, but we just want to be a of an efficient size so yeah around that we're kind of aiming to build it to that million litre mark is mm. kind of um, yeah we want to be and is that still to kind of keep the same model of core range pack and keg or does that kind of change at all um, no it's pretty similar it'll just um, um, mean the guys won't be brewing as hard and as long because it'll be more efficient it's yeah. a bigger brew house um, also where we are will allow us to extend the barrel program so it'll be mm. dedicated to where we are now. And, um, yeah, just a better offering for people that want to come to the brewery, a bit more comfortable, a bit more space, yep. um, you know, and hopefully, you know, a kitchen offering. Yeah, awesome. Um, for, um, I guess, leaving beer, as we talked about kind of the site and the, the beer crossovers um, and the hops of um, Hop Nation, um, you're up here kind of talking about 100% wine. Um, and you've kind of released under that site label um, just some straight wine. Tell Yeah, is that kind of going back to the past or, yeah, tell us about that. Um, so, yeah, a few years ago we took on the lease of a vineyard and winery with a couple of other guys. It's in Mornington Peninsula. Um, I used to work next door to it and the um, the guy that had it was just re- retiring and um, so we've taken it over and... Um, we make a yeah, Pinot and Chardonnay from there and then um, we also have been buying cherries off a friend up in Benella which is north of Melbourne um, who grows grapes as well so we also saw some fruit mm. from there we make our rosé and, sh- and a Shiraz um, and yeah it's it's an offering that we want to be able to give to people that come to the initially was come to the brewery and, and drink our wines as well yeah. but we decided to make a bit more and, and wholesale it and so yeah, it's it's starting starting again in in sense of introducing a brand to yeah. people, which is both exciting and um, and hard Terrifying. work. Yeah, is it uh, reminding you of how way you left some of the harvests? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely I the last few years have enjoyed March and April, the couple of the best <laughs> months of the year, and I didn't see them for quite a while. Yeah, um, I guess the other thing with the, the site wines that's unique is you are doing some in cans. Yep, yep. So we. We looked at the packaging, and um, because we have a you know a canning line and all the equipment to do it, we um, have our rosé and a um, spritzy chardonnay in can, um, just in the half bottle size and mm. an equivalent, so three seventy five mil can, and um, yeah, we're just kind of uh, seeing how it goes. It's you know definitely new in the market, and people kind of need to get their head around it, but it's it just makes sense in um, the Australian way of drinking with eskies and fridges yeah, yeah. and and parks and picnics and beaches yeah uh what could i guess you know looking into the future uh, we start with site what what do you see kind of where's site going um the site fermentation project i guess we just want to build some consistent um beers and keep experimenting and i think just getting our techniques um more fine-tuned because it is a still a quite a big learning process mm-hmm. um and just you know Hopefully, getting access or leases on good good orchards and um, can some consistent fruit supplies, and then keep our base beers interesting. Um, you know, we yeah, we went from a three seventy five mil bottle to a can, and I think that's helped quite a bit as well for people yep. to give it a go because you know that these beers can be pretty out there, and people don't 
necessarily know what they're getting, especially in a newish brand. So, yeah, yeah um, that's been good for us. So that's been the last year we've done that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, last but not least, what can we expect in the last, next five years or next few years for Hop Nation? Um, phew, to be honest, I, I don't think I've got enough on the plate at the moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, we've... We, you know, it's part of our business model and, and what we want to do. We always want to be pushing the boundaries on what's coming up and, and trending and then trying to keep our own, you know, things entering the market. You know, they don't always work, but um, it's something that, yeah, we, we strive mm. to do. So instead of just sitting on our hands on something that's worked, is trying to see what's next and creating flavors. That, yeah. I guess you talked about that, what's trending and what's next. What do you think's next, style-wise? Um yeah, good question. Um, seltzers, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think IPAs have still got um, a lot to evolve in. I think sours um, are, are in a really exciting space, and that's one that we're kind of you guys looking at doing. A, you're looking at doing a seltzer. Um, yeah, yeah. We've we've made a couple already. Yeah, we're we're having a go. So we'll see how they go. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming in and telling a bit of the Hop Nation story. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I uh, hope you hope to see you around for anyone out there. Uh, look out for the rebranded Jedi Juice coming out in a few weeks. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much to Sam and the team at Hop Nation for coming in and having a chat to us and telling the story of Hop Nation. I personally can't wait to see where they go with the new brewery being built. Uh, certainly exciting times on the horizon. Uh, if you've got any questions about this uh, episode, please jump on our Facebook group, Beer Cartels Craft Beer Collective. Uh, just put them up on there. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with the latest from the craft beer industry, uh, please subscribe at either iTunes Podcast, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcast. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.